So I'm basically making this video for me 12 years ago. If only I knew then what I now know about rosin. signs that I possibly had a problem with my rosin technique was just about a year into playing cello. I'd bought my first cello. I was so excited and I'd had it for a few months. I brought it back in for kind of a routine checkup. The shop owner who'd sold it to me opened up the case. He's just like, what happened? And I looked and suddenly I started to notice too that there was this matte finish of like caked crud all over the front of my cello. I'll admit what was going on. I was rosining like between scales. I'd practice a scale. I'd do a two octave scale and then I'd rosin because I was told that if you don't use enough rosin, your bow is not gonna make a sound. It's not gonna work. So guess what? I, we're not gonna do that. That's for sure. So I was rosining like probably every five minutes. It, it, ridiculous. I don't know, just a habit. Then when I was done practicing, I would take my cleaning cloth and I would wipe off the strings and then I would wipe off the rosin on the front of the cello. So basically I'm taking all of the rosin off the strings and polishing it into my cello, creating this horrific matte finish. That still didn't get through to me apparently. So the next time I really noticed, this is when I finally had a light bulb moment. I was on stage for the first time playing like a small piece of chamber music that a fellow student had written. I've only been playing for about a year and a half and I'm so nervous. So what are you gonna do? to make sure you get that perfect, perfect performance. You got a rosin, right? I don't know, I probably black, I have no idea how much rosin I put on, but the first thing I have to do is play a chord. I get ready and boom. And literally I was so distracted because an enormous cloud of, of rosin dust, it was like a magician's act. And <laughs> very embarrassing. So in honor of that, today we're gonna cover the topic of rosin. Years ago during my first cello lesson, I learned that my bow essentially wouldn't work without rosin, but I still had a lot of questions. Which type to use? Does the type of brand even really make a difference? And as I just explained, how much should you use, okay? So if you're in the same boat as I was, then this video is for you. So let's just dive right in. So rosin is made primarily from the sap of pine trees and different makers choose from around 110 different species of pine tree according to the prescriptions of their secret recipes. The freshest rosin is obtained by tapping into living trees. And one thing I find super interesting is that often the color of the rosin corresponds to the season in which it was harvested. So lighter colors usually come from late winter, or early spring, and darker colors will come from summer or fall. The makers then add other ingredients such as sap from other trees or elements like gold, silver, copper. They heat everything up, they strain out the impurities, and when the rosin has just started to cool a little bit, they pour it into the molds and let it cool naturally. I love knowing this because it reminds me that as with luthiers and the art of cello making, many makers of high-end rosin use the same tools and processes that stretch back hundreds of years. So history lesson out of the way, let's talk a little more pragmatically. Here's my take on the questions I get asked most frequently about rosin. Number one, what type do you use or recommend? I personally use a brand called Baker's Rosin and I love it. The only catch is that they have a very limited supply because they make it once a year. And I'm not sure they're still accepting names for new orders, but there are tons of great rosins out there. And one I love to suggest that is totally excellent and not crazy expensive is Olive by Parastro. I found it works great with all the bows and instruments that I've tried it on. I've never had a problem. Question number two, what's the difference between light and dark rosin? In general, lighter rosin will be a little harder and finer, which means less sticky, and darker rosin is usually softer and stickier and more suited to the lower strings like cello and bass. Okay, so that being said, I personally tend to shy away from extra sticky rosin because I prefer rosin that encourages kind of a smoother sound and less punchy starts to my bow strokes. So question number three, does changing rosin types or brands really make a difference? Okay, so the answer is yes, but it's one of the last things I would actually worry about. For me, it goes cello and bow tied for number one, most important. Then I worry about choosing the right cello strings and then much, much later, lower on the totem pole are items 
like rosin, the type of tailpiece I'm going to use, the type of end pin I have, they all make a difference, but it's not as big as the other stuff. However, if you currently have a really cheap or really old cake of rosin, buying yourself a nice new cake of the good stuff would probably make a big difference. I mean, for $10, $15, why not give it a try? Question number four, does rosin go bad? I know people who keep extra rosin in a small jar in the fridge at home. They stress out about having it dry out on them. And I also know great players who still use the same tiny sliver from a cake they bought over a decade ago. I do think rosin feels different as it begins to dry out. I guess it's just a question of whether you decide to care about it or not. Personally, I usually retire a cake of rosin after a year, or year and a half. And often I do notice a big difference when I open up the new stuff. Question five is how do I rosin up the bow correctly? Here's what I do. So as you can see, got the rosin here in my right hand. I'm gonna take the bow at the frog, put it flat onto the rosin, all the hair flat, and then do one swipe all the way from the frog to the tip, repeat. So I'm not tickling the hair, I'm really trying to sink in there. You'll listen for this sound. Okay, four or five times, and I'm good to go. Okay, and finally, number six, how much rosin should you use? I've kind of talked about it already, so here's what I would say. If you're practicing two to three hours a day, I would go ahead and just rosin up your bow maybe once a day. If you put in maybe 30 minutes a day of rosin, I'd say, <laughs> if you put in 30 minutes of practice a day, maybe every three to four days. The biggest thing is that after you start playing cello consistently, you'll start to feel it actually. You'll, you'll feel that the bow is just not gripping. It's a little harder to make a sound. That's usually the telltale sign that you don't have enough rosin on the bow. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. Feel free to leave a comment below if there's anything else you'd like to know about rosin, or if you have a favorite brand that you prefer. Thanks so much for watching.